to you, Bulls in a China Shop is brought to you in part by our sponsors and friends over at Manscaped, Trade Pro Academy, and Vanta Trading. Manscaped is the best in men's below the waist grooming with precision engineered tools for your family jewels and with a new and improved 2.0 version of the Weed Whacker now available. It's the perfect time to take advantage of our exclusive offer of 20% off and free worldwide shipping using promo code 2Bulls at manscaped.com. As always, that is the number two. And when it comes to institutional quality trading education, look no further than TradeProAcademy.com. In our free Discord server, you'll find instructions to take advantage of our discount with them as well. And for anyone trading futures, check out VantaTrading.com. Founded by Mr. W. Banks and Baba Yaga, they provide a ton of educational content with the focus of teaching aspiring traders how to build a repeatable, profitable process. Our exclusive discount code for Vanta can also be found in our free Discord server. We'll have all those links and more in the episode description. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy today's conversation. You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats, my face. Hello, everybody, and... Welcome back to the China Shop. I am your host, Kyle, and joining me as always for today's midweek update is Eric from ES Invests. How are you doing today, Eric? Goodbye. <laughs> gonna set it. You know, if we keep doing that, eventually you're going to be saying it at the right point. Well, I was figuring, you know, sooner or later, a broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah. So yeah. I'm well on my way to being accurate. Right. Eventually. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. It seems more on the later side. Right. <laughs> so what's new in your world, man? Chilling, man. Um, today I launched that video with Richard Friesen, which is the dude that you referred over to me, which was actually like just a really, really fun conversation. I enjoyed that a lot. Oh, that guy's um, such a good dude. Yeah. And it's there, there's another person I did an interview with not too long ago. Her name is Louise Bedford. I, I think it's on her podcast. She interviewed me. Hmm. Um, it's more just a general conversation. But um, those kind of people are really interesting to me because I think about a side of things that I don't focus that much on, like mm-hmm. on a day to day. So I think it's like that part is really cool. Like the thing with Louise Bedford that I found was really cool. Is she got me to think more about something that I never really considered, which is like, um, aversion goals versus target goals or whatever the fuck the other version was, but essentially like, you know, are we creating goals to help us avert from something we don't want to happen or to target something we do want to happen? Like, that's interesting. So what's the fucking thought of that dude? How do you know the difference? It's by the the quality of the goal, right? So like if your trading goal is to make 15% per year, you have a target. The target is 15%. Mm -hmm. So that's like a target goal. But if your goal for the year is not to lose more than 5%, that's an aversion goal. You are trying not to lose X percent. So So you're starting off with a negative mindset. In general, and it's not to say that aversion goals are always useless, but I do think it's really good to be able to differentiate between the two because then the supporting structure we apply around it actually changes. Oh, that's fascinating. Isn't it? It's, yeah. I, and I, I literally never thought about that before. What was the name of that uh, podcast again? It was with Louise Bedford. I can send you the the link to it. Yeah, please do. Yeah, that one was interesting. Um, here we go. Yeah, I got it right here. I'll drop it in that for us. All right, perfect. Uh, oh, I was going to tell you, I was supposed to be talking to DeCarly um, coming oh, up good. on Monday. Uh, we got that one set up. Anything uh, in particular I should ask her about? Futures. Anything futures. She does. Anything well, futures. Yeah. She, that, that's, I mean, she, she has a, a boutique brokerage service that she runs on futures, essentially. I was going to end up asking her about that. I, how do you? How the fuck do you start a brokerage? Yep, there you go. You should ask her about that. You should ask her about how her day-to-day looks as a boutique brokerage compared to like and competing against all these big brokerage firms. Yeah. You should ask her about things like payment for order flow. You should mm. ask her about uh, commodity future cycles. That is really because that's like the big thing she does is commodities. But 
because mm-hmm. equities are pretty straightforward, right? Like we trade equities and no equity. We know a lot about equities. Anybody that trades for an extended period of time will get there. But really the cool part is to be able to tap into very specific industry expertise and commodities right. are very uh, tricky that way because you have to know about the production cycles of corn. You have to know about what weather will impact the yield of wheat and right. like learning some of those different nuances is actually really, it's a, it's a neat thing to be able to do. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be a fun conversation too. Yeah, dude. She's, she's dope. She's super, super cool. All right. So what do we have uh, for this week? And we want to talk about, well, what do you think about the good old markets out there? How did the fed do today? <laughs> uh, I think they came in as expected, right? Yeah. Quarter, quarter bip rate hike. I think the the rate hike was in line with expectations. The main thing that was a pretty noteworthy change was the language forecasting out to the 14 June yeah. Fed meeting, yeah. which essentially indicated leaning more towards um, a pause because there was right. one specific phrasing that we wanted to hear, which is something- I've got it right here if you want to hit, if you yeah. want the actual phrase. Uh, it's just something about policy firming, like anything. Yeah. Anything that included the terms policy firming would have told us that they're looking at more hikes in the future, but that wasn't there. Yep. Yeah. The, the exact phrase was the committee anticipates some additional policy firming may be appropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was interesting. I was having a conversation with uh, Mr. Banks over in Vonta's trading room about this pre-market we're just kind of talking about what uh, he was looking at for the day goes and he said something that i was thinking kind of last uh, last cycle where like if the fed was to come out and not raise rates that would actually be a little more scary than if they stuck to what everyone was anticipating with the quarter bit yeah and i think i don't think really anybody was expecting to not raise rates and a lot of that really comes down to the fact that um, we need to make sure that inflation is adequately controlled. So, yeah. yeah, by averting off that to your point, if they did that too prematurely, which this definitely would have been, at least at this point, that would have grossly freaked everybody out. Um, yeah, because that means that basically the the whatever's going on with the banking sector is a lot worse than people are thinking. Exactly. It which means- it's not looking all that great now as is. <laughs> It means that we're we're breaking everything. Yeah, which I did see. If uh, I did see that, it looked like First Republic got uh, seized and sold off to J.P. Morgan on Monday, and this comes you know a few days after you were just talking about the the credit crunch that's been going on. Yeah, and it doesn't look like the credit crunch is going anywhere. Um, I I think we're just continuing to see more of the impacts of raising rates. I mean. Mm-hmm. Jack jacking up rates essentially five percent in what less than a year and a half. Right. Um, it just it adds a shit ton of pressure. And my hypothesis is actually that we're just starting to see the actual effects because you know we didn't really get to a crescendo until the end of last year. So I think that's also why we're seeing kind of a mixed earnings cycles here, where we're hmm. no big surprise seeing large cap doing well. Large cap tends to do well here with a lot of pricing power. And then small cap growth tend to not do so great. And that's, I mean, exactly what we're seeing. The S&P 500, as of Monday, I haven't looked at it. Oh, I look, I don't know why I would quote you as of Monday, just because I conveniently <laughs> looked at it then. Um, so the S&P 500 year to date today is 6.2% up. And IWM, the Russell 2000 small cap is down 2%. So big variance there. Yeah. Um, and actually, as of Monday, that gap was about the same because the S&P 500 was up 8% and the S&P 500 was about, or uh, IWM was about unchanged. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're seeing that relationship play out. Yeah, you've been shorting uh, IWM for most of the year. At least it seems like every time I talk to you, you're talking about a position you have on there. If you were still holding. Yeah, it's a covered strangle. So it's it's actually bullish in nature. Uh... Um, but it's specific, it has short components to it, to your point. Mm -hmm. So it almost always will like right now I have like what I would consider like the full covered strangle. A lot of times I trade the individual legs on it, but right now I'm long shares. Um, I'm short puts and I actually don't have short calls out right now because they just cycled off, but I'll add more short calls. And that's essentially what gives us the full covered strangle. 
So did you trade the FOMC movement at all or did you uh, did. were you trading leading up to it? Yeah, I traded both actually. And it's funny because I my I mostly was trading SPX for it. Uh-huh. And I started with my first trade at 9:45 Pacific time and it was just short the 4130 straddle. So I got $39 credit on that. Mm-hmm. And I took that in about 20 minutes later, or some of it. I took some of that in 20 minutes later, and then I took more of it in uh, about two hours after that. And then I essentially established a new trade for the release itself, like right around 11. That was kind of recentered because we moved a little bit. So I did that. And I also had some long puts that I bought laddered in both SPY. At mm-hmm. I had the three May expiration and then the twelve May expiration. Okay, were you I'm trying to do the time conversion? So nine thirty would have been twelve thirty, so about a half hour before the news event happened. Yeah, because yeah, because they what reported two three p.m. Was that it? Uh, two p.m. Eastern, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. Yep, yep. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. So you were basically just trying to capture the decay from the morning to the release. Is yeah, that, exactly. Is that what I'm understanding? The, okay. And it's it was definitely fueled by the the volatility because mm-hmm. volatility was there was a very very large overstatement at least for a good part of the day so that's why I went with for the SPX trades it was zero DTE mm-hmm. I mean there's no shortage of liquidity there now <laughs> yeah no and <laughs> yeah it, it was to capture both the time but through volatilities. All right. Hey, everyone. Future Kyle here with a sneak peek of my upcoming conversation with Blaine McCauley, host of the Penny Lane podcast. You know, fairly quickly, it was just my whole life, all I could think about, all I could talk about. And I was at the beach with my sister and my brother-in-law in in the summer of 2021, had a couple drinks, and we were having dinner. And my brother-in-law said something about stocks or whatever. And I very sheepishly, I'm like, Oh, stocks? like, uh, do you do you do any trading? And he was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, I'm really into it. Mm-hmm. And then, it, you know, we had a six-hour conversation about it. And during the conversation, I was like, this is just magical. And I want to talk to you forever about stocks. Right. Let's do a podcast. And we just started up very casually, uh, called it the Penny Lane Podcast. And I wanted to name it that because I felt like, you know, Penny Lane, the very famous groupie from almost famous i was like that's who that's what i feel like i am with ah, like trading i'm like okay. the groupie i just assumed you were a beatles fan um you know i'm as big of a beatles fan as sort of the next guy but not not like i'm you know i'm much more of a fan of other people but i am a big fan of her oh shoot i might have to rewrite the uh, the outro i wrote for this then <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Okay, is it a a Beatles reference? Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. Full conversation will be available on May 8th. If you haven't heard by now, Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right, once again revolutionizing men's grooming with a brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code 2BULLS for 20% off and free shipping. God damn, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> Our friends over at Manscaped were kind enough to send me the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, and I gotta say, I was impressed with the quality and performance of the products. My thick, coarse beard hair has been giving me trouble with trimmers in the past, but the Beard Hedger was able to cut through the thicket without any tugging or discomfort at all. And because the trimmer has one rotary wheel with 20 link settings with only one guard, I don't have to worry about losing or breaking attachments anymore. So I've tamed my mane, and now you can too. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. It all starts with that beard hedger that I mentioned. Things a juggernaut of fixing faces. Not only does it have the trimmer with the rotary wheel that gives you the 20 hair cutting lengths of just the one guard, it's also waterproof, so you can shave in the shower and avoid all the hair in the sink. The titanium coated T blade is tough on hair but smooth on your face, leading to a single stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. Phrasing. The Pro Kit doesn't end there, though. They also created four dermatologist-tested formulations for your post-trim care. First is the Beard Shampoo and Conditioner. Gotta remember that all your hair is different. Beard hair, as I mentioned, is more coarse and easier to damage than the hair on your head. If you have hair on your head. 
That's why the kit has made shampoo and conditioner specially designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, replace natural oils, and promote beard health. Next, the kit has Manscaped's Beard Oil, an essential piece for your main facial accessory. No one wants a guy whose beard is brittle and dry. The oil relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath while adding a little shimmer and shine, which makes you look extra fine. Cap off the kit with the Beard Balm, a pomade that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look to attract any fellows or dames. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with code 2BULLS at manscaped.com. Of course, that's the number two. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using code 2BULLS. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus entered by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited. So now that the uh, the move has happened, like what's what's uh, what are you looking at for the rest of the week? Uh, still earnings. We are we are in the throes of earnings. I actually just reestablished a new box spread in SPX, which is a very common holding strategy for me for capital that I have assigned to like the coverage strangle that I'm not currently utilizing. So for example, I have the 4,000, 5,000, 12 May box spread in SPX. I have a 10 lot. So um, essentially what that means is with a thousand dollar width, 10 of them, the loan out is 998,600. The loan value is a million bucks. So what will happen is, is I'll collect that Delta on expiration. So it'll be like uh, $1,400. And the annualized return on that is 5.686%. Hmm. I don't think I've ever played around with box spreads. Can you explain the, the idea behind those a little bit more? Yeah, of course. And I also have a video that I did on them that I can link for you. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, essentially a box spread is a strategy used to capture the risk-free rate. It's a risk-free trade if you structure it correctly. And I need to emphasize that heavily because <laughs> yeah. there was a dude, as you probably would have guessed on Reddit, that no. did a box spread in UVXY. And he failed to understand that one of the biggest risks to a box spread is early assignment. So he was early assigned uh, on part of his trade margin call and he lost a shit ton of money, essentially. Oh. So when we're trading box spreads, it's very, very, very important to trade European style options. That's why I use SPX. Oh, so they can't close them early. They're, exactly. There's no early assignment and they're cash settled, which is another beautiful part because yeah. you can hold it through expiration. And if you have legs, you're going to have legs that are in the money. It doesn't matter. You're not going to have any sort of resulting position. It'll just be moved to cash. That's how they make their money. Oh, okay. So huh. yeah, it's, awesome. it's essentially an iron condor is what it's, that's why it's going to be at two strikes. So for the trade that I have on right now, it's long the 4,000 call, mm -hmm. short the 5,000 call, long the 5,000 put, short the 4,000 put. So <laughs> it's essentially buying a call, selling a put at two different strikes and then inverting on the other strike. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to have to watch that video because that sounds like it should be. Is that delta neutral then? Is that? Exactly. You you don't care. It's it's literally risk free. So it, it can go in circles and it doesn't matter. That's why they don't make a lot of money, right? Like in this case, um, and the other kind of important note is that if you buy them, you're essentially making a loan to the market. But you can also <laughs> sell them and you can get a loan from the market. And sometimes you can get a loan from the market at a better rate than you can elsewhere. Fucking hey. Like I know plenty of people who literally will finance a fucking car or something using a short box spread. Oh, and shit. yeah, exactly. And and then they'll essentially give themselves an annuity to pay it back. And yeah, you can make out better that way. It's not super common, but the point being is the reason why box spreads are great compared to short-term T-bills or all these other things is they are um variable so you can set up the specific time frames that you want like i said what i use is the capital that i have committed to other trades mm -hmm. so if i sell a cash secured put 
I don't need that money up front. But if it's just sitting there, it's not doing me any good either, but it, I need to have it available if I get assigned. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I typically put that money in box spreads so that I'm still earning the risk-free rate on that money. And if, let's say, I get assigned, um, I typically time it so that my expiration for the box spreads is before expiration for the short puts. Okay. And then if I had the unfortunate scenario where I'm assigned early and I essentially would use margin... And then it's a math problem. Do I want to just hold the shares on margin that may or may not cost more than a risk-free rate? Typically, it's going to cost more to hold them. Mm -hmm. And if it's the case, then I can just neutralize the box spread, take the money out, and then apply it to the position. So it's like a very variable way to still get a good return. Because if you look at like CDs and stuff like that, they don't pay that. And if they do, you have to go out two years. Right. And you still have relative liquidity with the CD, but it's not the same as a box spread because with a CD account, you pay a penalty if you close it early. Typically, you know, X number of months of interest earned. So then essentially right. you gain nothing. Whereas in the box spread, it's not the case. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I'm going to have to check out that video. Yeah. Going on to the, the earnings then. So what's coming up uh, for the rest of the week? Like what, what are the big ones? So I focus mostly on S&P 500 earnings because I'm generally trading volatility. So mm -hmm. after the market today, we had a couple, a couple that I was watching, like Qualcomm, they reported and they essentially didn't do great, but I actually think that will still be a profitable trade for me. Then there's also Met for today after the market. And then Thursday before the market, there was a couple that looked interesting to me, MRNA. And then... Is that Moderna? Yeah. And then after the market tomorrow, there's Expedia, EXPE. And then I was looking at um, AIG after the market tomorrow. And then Apple after the market tomorrow. And essentially what I'll do is I'll just wait until we get really close to market closing. And then I'll finalize whatever my trade hypothesis is. Typically, like I was telling you last time, it's going to be some sort of volatility capture, but sometimes it'll have a small directional skew. Sometimes it won't, but it's really important for me to be close to the actual release so that you're not mm -hmm. inadvertently getting exposed to direction in the meantime. Yeah, and that was uh, something that I think it took me a little bit to figure out because I think my always I always thought that volatility increases as you approach the earnings date. It does, but it's also not something that's easy to capture because you're just giving yourself a lot more time to have the price movements beforehand too, right? Yeah, if so, like you... the biggest de sorry, the biggest decay should be after as soon as the release is out and the uncertainty is gone. Absolutely. Right. That's yep. that's the meat of the move you want to capture if you're looking at volatility. Absolutely. So the way to trade around earnings releases is long volatility about two weeks out into the release. And then mm -hmm. at the release, post release is short volatility is really the mm. the playbook. But if you do long volatility, like if you buy a straddle, for example, you have to you don't have to, but it's silly to buy a straddle and not gamma hedge. That's one of the benefits of buying a straddle is to be able to gamma hedge essentially to try to pay your theta decay. So And with the gamma hedging, you're talking about shifting your the strikes that you're using? No, no. The base position would remain the same. You would use an underlying or a surrogate underlying to gotcha. continue okay. to neutralize okay. the deltas. So when we first place, let's say a long straddle. Or gamma should be about flat, but mm -hmm. you want to maintain. Yeah, it's sorry. It's kind of a retail traders very commonly would call it delta hedging, but really what you're doing is gamma hedging. Like at the end of the day, okay. that's actually what's that happening. Yeah. Because delta is it's fleeting. Delta is there and then it's gone, and a lot of that is because of gamma. So that's why mm -hmm. people who are trying to maintain direction neutrality were way more concerned with gamma than delta. Interesting. Great stuff today. I don't didn't expect to get into such a nuts and bolts type conversation, but I don't know. That's uh, that's why I like talking to you. Dude, could end up shooting the shit about guns for 15, 20 minutes, or we could be talking about stocks and options. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think we're in a really cool market environment now, you know, to to take a look at this stuff. So yeah, I, I think especially for people that are interested in trading earnings, it's like it's really useful to understand the behavior around earnings and getting into things like peed is really important 
because there's just there's so many misconceptions around earnings plays. Mm -hmm. hmm. Sounds like we should do a course on that. Yeah, I'm actually working on a, a video. I, I haven't started it yet, but I have it on my hit list to do um, essentially trading uh, trading earnings with options. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. To let us know when that comes out. I'm sure, we had plenty of people looking for it. Yeah, uh, there was. I think before we sign off, I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the stuff that's coming up for the end of the week. Because just because we had FOMC doesn't mean that we're done with uh, high impact news. Um, Thursday we've got jobless claims pre market, uh, and then Friday we've got unemployment reports coming out. Also, keep in mind now that the FOMC is done, there's going to be a lot more Fed speakers jumping on the mic and just throwing a wrench into everything. <laughs> if you are trading on the daily, like most of us are. Not like Eric. I don't think Eric cares. Uh, any other high impact things coming out uh, for the rest of the week that people should be paying attention to? No. I mean, I think you hit the the main stuff. I think the trade balance, I don't know if you mentioned that. I didn't catch that. but uh, The trade deficit, I didn't. I don't think that's usually high impact, is it? It, it will be. Yeah, I, I think it will oh, be really? for this cycle. Yeah, yeah. I, what do you I, think? I would argue that trade balance is going to be a bigger impact than like continued jobless claims, probably in line with jobless claims, not as high impact, but close to it. Interesting. What's the uh, what's the idea? Is that just showing how because um, like as inflation increases in America, our goods should get cheaper outside of the country. Is that kind of looking at like that idea? It's yeah, it's looking at I threw a link into the BEA, which will kind okay. of give you the, the actual release, but it tells us a lot about the health of the economy in general. That That's why it's really important, because interesting. Yeah, as we're in an inflationary period right now, moving products is super important. But then we also get a sight on what products are being impacted and how. So yeah, in this okay. kind of environment, okay. it's kind of a big deal. All right. That'll be tomorrow morning before the bell too. Mm. All right. Anything else you want to leave uh, the listeners with before we wrap up here? No, sir. All right. Well, that's going to take us to the end of the episode today. Let's to say thanks to everybody who stuck around to the end. Bye. And of course, Eric for the... <laughs> <laughs> <Son of a bitch. laughs> thank you eric for the well-timed goodbyes <laughs> if you'd like to know more about eric uh, make sure you check out his youtube at es invests also have links for those podcast episodes he uh, mentioned in the beginning you can check us out at two bulls in a china shop.com be back in here soon with another exciting episode but until then harness your inner happy gilmore and just tap that five star rating into its home like that one just tap it in <laughs>